Yo, what's up everybody? Long time no see, Lambo here. And I will make my own video about the balance patch. I've been asked about it a million times on my stream. Um, legitimately every single day, multiple people ask me and I didn't want to make a video because already everybody made one. Um, but I figured no one has made one after the patch actually has been played for a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm gonna give my opinions on it now. And I'm gonna tell you guys my experience so far with the patch. Uh, so let's, I'm gonna go through all the changes and then I'm go, gonna go through a lot of questions or concerns that I've seen in the community and in my chat. And I will talk about that, so it's a two-part video basically. So let's first go through the changes. The shield battery energy reduced from 100 to 50 outside of the Nexus field. Um, there's a couple of uh, mi mistakes here, I don't know how they made it in there, but uh, yeah. So, so this is basically just to nerf the strength of the proxy robo, proxy star gauge, shield battery rushes. I think all of them were a lot harder to hold than to play or to execute. So I think it is okay to nerf them. I don't think they were overpowered or anything. So this is kind of a mad change. It makes the strategy worse than already on the very highest level. It's not that great, but I think it's an okay change. They're very frustrating to play against and was it, it was very very strong if you didn't know the response for example against a cannon rush with the proxy robo you were just gonna die pretty much uh, there was not much you can do uh, likewise if I, I i actually do know the response if i make a single mistake like especially early on i lose a ravager or a queen or i miss like a transfuse same kind of ends like templar now have a 0.75 attack delay after the blink this is simply so terran players can try to save um there are planetaries every now and again. I honestly don't think this is a big change either. In most cases where the planetary died before, it still will die. I think everybody always looks at these changes and they're like, oh my god, insane nerfs. But these were all very safe nerfs. Uh, so yeah, this is... Obviously this doesn't matter at all against Zoic. Against Terran, they sometimes jump on the army and against Protoss as well. But this is mostly for the planetaries, I believe. And yeah, it has helped... I, I don't know if it has helped at all, but uh, I've watched GSL, I've watched a bunch of TVPs and pros still make DTs in late game. They still seem pretty strong. So that's, I mean, it's it's fine to have a DTs as a strong late game harass tool, right, in uh, in TVP. Then the next are the void rate changes. Void rays take uh, six seconds longer to build and the mineral cost got increased from 200 to 250. So that basically means the void rate builds are a little bit worse um you're basically gonna have a little bit less void rays if you're playing a void ray build i think this was an absolutely necessary change uh not because the void ray style was too strong but design wise it was an absolute catastrophe the zvp was awful 70 percent of the games for the last two years like ever ever since the they played that build already on a consistent basis before they cut to the drainer one um so that is Katowice uh, 2021 and before that they already played it, so for one one year plus uh, this build has been used by Protoss players and basically the reason I think this build shouldn't even be in the game or at least not the strength that it had uh, was because you barely needed to scout and react because you actually you would make four void rays, then you would straight make a fourth base and you would go into triple carrier production and these carriers actually would even defend Muta, so you wouldn't really even have to scout for that, which seemed pretty dumb. That build was safe against pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, the only thing wh what you had to scout for was a queen walk, but you could always reactively throw down shoot batteries and cannons and be fine against that. So uh, it kind of forced a passive game from both sides, which just shouldn't be in the game. Like no multitasking was allowed from either side. The void race can cruise around, but usually they would do not do anything. As a Zerg, you can't really run by because the void race just clear it. Everything for free, it's... It was not very fun to play against, and I also don't think it was very fun to play uh, for the Protoss players, so it's good that that build got nerfed. At the same time, the Queen can now lo no longer transfuse off creep. This is uh, the biggest nerf of the patch by far. Um, this is aimed at Protoss ground. This is basically a buff to a lot of Protoss ground openers, because a lot of Protoss openers, uh, if they had a normal, normally timed third base with a Stargate opener, you would try to queen walk them they uh could, they would not be able to defend like it was legitimately impossible with void race unless you were on a super short map like berlingrad uh, you can always defend but with the if you play a couple of oracles and then into twilight forge you're just dead 
against Queen Walks, and that was not cool, so this would give Protoss a little bit more build or variety. Uh, it was the only all-in really we had uh, in the very early game, so tier 1. So there is no more tier 1 all-in. Uh, Bidding bus or something doesn't exist on high level. The only thing we might have is a Ling Flood with a drone pull, but that's only if they play Twilight as well. So I, we don't really have any uh, tier 1 all-ins. Now it's debatable if that is a great design change, but I actually was uh, very in favor of nerfing uh, Queen Walks. Um, I suggested something very similar, so a Queen off creep nerf basically. And yeah, th this also, you can notice it, now that I've played a bunch with it, I had a bunch of queens dying in the early game against Terran, when they were a little bit off creep and I barely couldn't transfuse them. And yeah, it, it can sometimes be annoying, but... Um, yeah, I think overall it, it is a good change. And now the only all-in basically we have is the, the taxi, but the taxi actually became harder to play as well because you need to bring a bunch of extra overlords. Uh, to spread creep. So whenever you do an all-in, basically now you need to bring a bunch of overlords and spread creep, and it actually requires quite a bit of micro. So that's cool. So something to look forward to is seeing pro players fail at micro overlords from now on. Then the widow mine nerf reduced the effectiveness of drilling claws from 0.71 seconds to 1.07 seconds. Uh, this is a nerf mostly to widow mine drops with drilling claws. So this mostly affects TVZ only, not really the proto side so much, because Terran players could drop in your mineral line, even though you had Zerglings there, and Queens, and a Spore, and you would not be able to kill the Widow Mines, and that felt super cheap, because the Widow Mines always would trade well. Um, the best thing you could do is pull, pull away and give them one drone each, or try to do Spore Caller tricks. But you had to pull, a, pull away super fast if you basically did not pay attention, and they started dropping and you didn't move away already, they were gonna get shots off on drones and that felt kind of cheap. And at the same time, the Lurker, um, it's practically the same change after they have their upgrade. They now require uh, 0.7, like it's the exact same change basically as the Widow Mine. These changes look quite big, uh, they both mostly affect TVZ, but they're not quite as big as they seem because the Widow Mine, by the time you have Drilling Claws, usually the other guy has detection, so... By the time it borrows, it still needs a second to shoot, and usually that's uh, the timing. So before it was like point, uh, 1.7 seconds that you had time to kill it, and now it's 2 seconds, basically. Uh, same with the Lurker, actually, because the Lurker, the scenarios it affects the most are the Ghost Snipes, and usually those are at max range, and the Lurker spine takes quite a while to, to uh, fire, basically. So... Yeah, I think those changes both look very big, but they're not actually that big. I think both of the changes are good. I think both of these felt design-wise uh, rather rough to play against from either side. Um, I think this change is not really gonna be um, changing anything against Protoss because no Zerg makes lurkers against Protoss unless they play Stalkers realistically. And then there is one super small change, um, which, which was basically the Nidus Worm increased uh, the starting creep by one unit in each direction, that's just so if you unload the queens with the Nidus all you can transfuse right away. Nidus all themselves got nerfed massively, um, even with this change, because the queens now cannot just run forward and start transfusing. For example, if you Nidus or Protoss, you have to do it quite far away. So the Nidus doesn't die, and then the queens usually walk forward, but they can't do that now because they need to wait for creep, so you need to spend energy on uh, creep, which you did not need to before, for example. And yeah, against Terran, more or less nothing will change, usually if the Nidus goes up um, without it being scouted. Terran usually dies in most scenarios, like if they didn't go 3c2 on 1 or realistically any build with a tank or multiple marines. So this is not really... like Nidus Worms overall got nerfed quite heavily because of this. But it won't change all too much, so that's just a quick overview on how I see these changes. I think this is obviously necessary for the build to not completely die. Um, this I think is a good change. I think this is a good change. I think this is a good change. I think this one is not quite as um, elegant as I think it could have been, but still a good change. I think this is a good change. I think this I can not really judge. I, I feel like this does barely anything to be honest, <laughs> but it seems like a decent change. This one is the most debatable one for me, if it's a good change or not, but overall I like it. A lot of um, safe changes for certain problem areas that we had in the game. And now with the ne in the next part, I'm gonna go through some of the concerns that you guys had and that I saw already.
All right, now one of the questions I got the most personally uh, from my t Twitch chat is if I was part of the balance chat or group. Um, obviously, um, it's like everybody by now knows that this balance group or chat existed. I think they also wrote it in the post uh, that they said they made this with their very own SA2 community. And I can, of course, say that I was part of that group. Uh, I can't really talk about what we say inside that chat whatsoever because I uh, had to sign an NDA, but basically every pro gamer that played like in DreamX or GSL got an email uh, which invited them to help with this project of uh, trying to make StarCraft a better game pretty much. And that means a lot of also your favorite pro player, um, there's a good chance that they are going to be in there if they answer that email. All you had to do was send an NDA, sign back, and then you had a chance to to get into that uh so yeah i have been invited and i am an active part of that that was the first question then the second question which is also the one that i saw a lot initially in my chat because i'm a zerg streamer is that people were worried about skytos being played even more because queen walks are dead and this stems from also one of the most common misconceptions right now which is that queen walks were made just to counter skytos uh, queen walks were actually around since forever against any type of target openers and we used them against Skytos but the two target void ray opener actually was played that much because it was safe against them not the other way around we didn't play queen walks as we scouted that it is two target void ray uh, but rather that protosses are playing two target void ray because it was a safe build that's why they played it pretty much every game there's protoss players that played the same build every single game you can't do that if it was countered by queen walks so Two Saga Void Ray actually counters the Queen Walks. What Queen Walks really countered were, for example, if a Protoss opens um, two Gate, Oracle, uh, two Oracle, then they take a third hat, the, a third Nexus, and then they try to go into ground. Uh, and they, they try to defend with Sentry, Stalkers, Shoot Batteries, Cannons. That usually would not work uh, against Queen Walks. Similarly, if they would try to go Glaives after Stargate, you could do a Queen Walk counter attack, and usually it would just be supposed to be a win for the Zerg if he executes properly. Whereas two second void actually was not supposed to hold, uh, was actually not supposed to die to uh, these queen walks. And what the people that are raising this concern are forgetting is that two second void actually is nerfed, even though the nerfs don't seem that big if you look at them. Especially the void build time is quite a big nerf when it comes to corruptor timings, for example. Uh, you can still do delayed queen walks, however you want, with um, overlord speed and bringing overlords to the front. So you can still do that like, the maxed out queen attacks if they skip a robo bay or something but if they don't skip a robo bay you can simply go for a corruptor timing and so far um now that i have played a bunch of this i have not seen a single protoss that has defended my corruptor timing properly not a single one uh especially if they went into a fleet beacon so if they did that normal skytos opener that you guys are so worried about um yeah legitimately not a single one did defend it so far because the response to that was you make four voyages, take a third nexus, you make three carriers, right? But then you scout a spire and the lack of a hive, and then you just continue void ray production, which now all those void rays are gonna come out a little bit later, and that actually matters quite a bit on high level. I don't know how it's gonna be on lower level, but I think if you guys learn how to do the early game perfectly and then you hit a corruptor timing, I'm probably gonna make a tutorial on it honestly, because I get asked so much for it. Um, then I think you guys will also be successful in your games against these Skytos openers. So it's actually the opposite. Skytos is going to be played less because of this, also because a lot of other ground openers now are, are a little bit more viable. So the next thing that I I wrote down, and this one I saw a lot, not really in my chat, but mostly on forums, which was a crazy one to me, was uh, how come Protoss got nerfed the most, even though they do the worst in the most recent tournaments? And then they would count the amount of nerfs. Um, uh, they said the Protoss got three nerfs or even four, if you count the Void Ray as two separate nerfs. And then Terran has one nerf and and Zerg has two nerfs and these people even counted the Nidus thing as a buff, even though Nidus got worse due to the Queen nerf. So people just counted the nerfs. This is like me saying, hey, uh, the Queen got removed from the game. Uh, but then the, the, the Protoss players come here with their carrier got nerfed 1 HP, the Void Ray got nerfed 1 HP. Hey, we got two nerfs, you got one. Our race got nerfed the most. This is kind of what it sounds like to me. This obviously is a lot closer. But if you, uh, I think, have high level understanding, I'm pretty sure you 
uh, mo most pros agree that this is an overall nerf for uh, for Zerg in ZVP. Now, obviously, Protoss got nerfed more than Terran in that matchup, but mostly they just got the proxy void ray removed. And the DTs got a super slight nerf. Like these are a lot of these are design changes which barely change anything in terms of balance. Practically nothing. The only matchup that actually changes a lot is PvZ. Where um yeah, the Queen Walk nerf alone, even I'm not even thinking about the Lurker nerf because Lurkers aren't really played against Protoss, but even just the Queen Walk nerf alone is bigger than all the other nerfs. The DT nerf is completely irrelevant for that matchup. The shield battery is irrelevant on high level. Uh so you have to compare the Void Ray nerf and the Queen with nerf and then uh, see whatever you think is worse. Uh, in in my opinion, I think that the Zerg got nerfed more than, than Protoss in that matchup. And I, 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 I think you can ask your favorite Protoss streamer, Highstorm or Showtime, if they agree. Instead of whining about it on the forums. And then the next one that I saw is that people think this patch is aimed at lower level letter play. Which I don't really know how they got this from because everybody seems to know that pro gamers made this patch. And all of this is aimed at high at, at issues that were here for high level players. So this is not at all aimed at at, at letter play, I believe. So I don't know. I don't know where this is even coming from, to be honest. So I'm just gonna go past that. Uh to the to the one point that I also saw and I thought was quite important for me to mention, which was that with pros we will never get big changes now because pros always just go for safe changes and pros have to agree on it and whatever so the the game will basically stay as it is and i think this one is a little bit wrong without th saying what is going on at all in the chat uh but I, I i can tell you from my experience that most pro gamers are completely fine with uh, bigger design changes and actually want to have a fresh game as well just like you do because we are actually the, the ones that play this for a living and we have to play this every single day and um having a bigger patch for us was always the greatest time like right after right after blizzcon even though there were no um big tournaments there was always a break everybody was excited to play again and we would love nothing more but for 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 us to change the game to make it better for everybody uh more specifically actually for us uh, I don't really care so much about the lower level play, but usually, for example, in this patch, I think uh, the game got a little bit better on the high level. Some design flaws were fixed, and then it also affected the lower level positively. I don't, I don't really think we're gonna mess up anything for the for the typical Diamond League game. But I, I really hope that uh, you guys understand that not only me, but I think most other pros are completely fine and open to discuss bigger changes. Um, just from talking to them, not not really about what's what's going on in the chat, but uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to to point it out there. We really just want to have a, a better game. There's still a lot of design flaws in the game. Um, for me personally, I, I I think the PVZ late game can, it could be so much better than it is right now, even though we barely ever see it, uh, because usually neither player is confident in late game very very often, unless their name is Serial. Um so we don't really see it that much anymore now that the voider openers are being played a lot less but that that for example would be a very easy one where you can try a lot of things uh to change it so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this type of video i just wanted to make a quick rundown of the of the changes I also i i kind of wanted to talk about now that i played already for a little bit i actually played against a lot less to target voider on the ladder uh, I just wanted to point that out there in case you guys are wondering, hey, are they still playing Skytos? On the latter, not so much, but to be honest, they might be able to figure out a way to play um, to Stargate Voidray and it's safe. Like, you can never know. It took them a year or so to figure out that you can just make a couple of Voidrays and you're safe against everything. So they might figure out something again now that Queen Walks are gone, but for now they do not uh, have anything against the Corruptor timings and the other timings that you can do. And even in the GSL, I think everybody so far that played to Stargate Voidray besides Creator today against Solar, uh, who kind of just won with the ground afterwards. Um, but yeah, the guys that tried to play Skytos all died, I believe. So, so far it's looking so good, to be honest. And yeah, that's it for me. If you guys like it, if, if you guys like this video, you can leave a like, comment and subscribe. Or don't, I don't really care. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.